It's time to go in depth with the My Player Builder. Everything My Player Builder related will be explained in this video. I'm gonna waste zero time. Just know if you watch this whole video, you will completely be ready to make the build you want to make when you load up NBA 2K25. All I ask in return is for you just to subscribe. That's it. And drop a like if this video helps you at all. Now, if you wanna skip around, which I don't recommend, hover over the video timeline at the bottom of the video to see what I talk about at different points in the video. What is good, YouTube? It's your boy, Henry, AKA Double. H back at it with yet an early 2k25 video now let's start by doing a complete my player builder walkthrough and go through every single step of the builder and then we'll go in depth to each section of the builder and really explain what's new with the builder and stuff that's similar or completely different than the 2k24 builder so unlike in 2k24 where you're met with the custom build the nba template and the community builds option in 2k25 you're just met with off the rip the create your own custom build screen now 2k has not mentioned a single time anything about nba template builds and nba template builds were in last year's 2k community day demo and they weren't here this time so i'm expecting or assuming that nba template builds are completely gone from 2k25 now they did mention that community builds will be back for season two so that's why you don't see that section right now but anyways we all for now we just have the custom build screen where you can select your first name last name your left or right hand your jersey number and that's it so then once you're done with that you go to the next screen and this is where you can select your position your height your weight and your wingspan they're probably already noticing some stuff that's different than the 2k24 builder because in the 2k24 builder you would be able to see your potential badges you can unlock on the far right but in the 2k25 builder this screen has nothing about badges and the big reason for that is because this year there's no c tier b tier a tier or s tier badges like there was in 24 and this year there's just tier one and tier two badges but we'll get into that later but just keep in mind that weight height and wingspan is obviously going to affect your stats and that's why it shows the max potential stats you can have on your build with the ratings in the middle of the screen now keep in mind there are certain heights that will get more attributes to work with in the builder and certain badges that are locked behind certain heights but we'll talk about that more later in the video then once you choose all that stuff you're met with the next screen where it shows a list of attributes that you can customize it also shows what position height weight and wingspan you chose in the previous screen and there's also a bunch of information on the right side of the screen about badges and takeovers so yeah unlike last year takeovers is built into the builder this year now once again once you upgrade a certain stat like three pointer like i did right there other stats will be affected by you upgrading that stat just like last year so i upgrade my three pointer my free throw mid-range and close shot goes up and just like that last year whatever stat you're hovering over will also show a description of what that stat does another thing you might notice is as you are upgrading your build there is a bar on the left side that fills up and the more you upgrade it the more that bar fills up and the more your overall changes until you reach the 99 overall now if you are in the middle of making your build you can reset all the attributes again by just clicking triangle or y and clicking yes for the confirm to reset all your stats another thing is if you back out of this attribute screen and go back to the last screen if you do end up changing your position height weight and wingspan obviously your attributes are going to change when you go back to that attribute screen and just like last year if you are hovering over a certain stat you can see what badges are affected by that stat so right here i'm hovering over steel the only badges that it is affected by is glove and interceptor and that goes for every single stat that you hover over not only that but it shows what tiers these badges are on so you see a hover over perimeter defense and it shows that challenger on ball medicine pick dodger are tier one but immovable enforcer and off ball pest are tier two that's going to be very important when you're in the builder and you want to know what badges you want to use on your badge elevators for level 15 as a tier 2 badge and level 30 as a tier 1 badge you can also change the screen on the right side by not only just showing the badges that is affecting the stat that you're hovering over and show all the badges you unlocked and it is separated by all the tier 1 badges on the left and all the tier 2 badges on the right not only that but you can hover over all these badges and see what the requirements are for each level from bronze all the way to legend to unlock these badges now the badges that are obviously filled in with silver gold bronze hall of famer legend are badges that you have unlocked at those levels and badges that are just completely blacked out are badges that you could unlock at this height weight wingspan and position but you just don't have the attributes filled up for them yet and badges that are grayed out are badges that you cannot get on this build no matter what you upgrade in the attribute screen 
based off your position, height, weight, wingspan. Not only that, but once you're on this badge screen, you can click the right bumper and it will take you to the takeovers menu and it'll show every single takeover. Yes, all 72 takeovers in the entire game. And you can hover over each of these takeovers and see how it would affect your build and its attributes from what level one through level five. Not only that, but it also shows what takeover ability is paired with these takeovers. Now, a lot of these takeovers are grayed out because you're not unlocking them with this build. And a lot of them are highlighted in white, but if you just want to see what takeovers you unlock with this build, you simply just click triangle or Y and it'll show you a list of the takeovers that you are only able to use with the current build that you have upgraded. So on this build right here, I have what? eight takeovers unlocked with takeover abilities attached to them. So this is going to be very important when you're customizing your build, especially if you want to have a certain takeover unlocked. Now, once you're done completely customizing your build, you're going to go ahead and continue once you reach that 99 overall. And this is going to have like a similar screen to past years where it shows what shades your build is. It gives you three players that your build is similar to. And then it shows you your build name. And then you have two options, whether you can go edit the build to go back another screen and go change some attributes up, or you can go to the My Core. Now, as soon as you go in the My Core, if you turn right, you can go to the Learn 2K section where you could practice with NBA players and legend players with their moves and all that good stuff. Or you can stay in this room and literally just hop on a court and test animations and jump shots and badges and all that good stuff. Now, unfortunately at Community Day, we weren't given that option, but in the final game, you'll be able to test jump shots and drill moves with your build before making it. Another thing you can actually do, which I'm not 100% sure if you can do this in the final game, but we were able to do it here at Community Day, is you can invite friends to your my core to potentially test your build where you could play 1v1 2v2 3v3 not only that but you can invite nba players to your my core as well and i'm not 100 percent sure but i'm assuming you can also do drills as well but anyways that's a complete walkthrough of the 2k25 my player builder now let's get into the important stuff and the nitty gritty details of each section of the my player builder to allow you to fully understand this builder so you are ready to load up 2k25 to make the build you want to customize so the first thing we're going to go over is build cutoffs uh for each position so the smallest build you can make in 2k25 is five foot nine yeah so anybody who want to make a five seven or five eight can't do that the tallest point guard build you can make is six seven the smallest shooting guard you can make is six foot the tallest shooting guard you can make is six eight so you can't make no 6'8 point guards anymore. If you want to be 6'8, you got to go to small or shooting guard. Tallest small forward you make is 6'10. Shortest small forward you can make is 6'4. And for power forward, the tallest you can go is 7 foot. And the shortest you can go is 6'5. And then finally center, you can't go past 7'3. It's still max height 7'3 and minimum height 6'7. And max weight 290 pounds. Uh, and the max wingspan is going to be eight foot now let's go over what weight and wingspan specifically affects when it comes to the actual max potential attributes so when it comes to the weight you're going to see me mess around with it. you can see them move the stats move yourself but i'm going to list off the stats that are being affected by weight regardless so the stats that are affected by weight the only finishing stat that's affected is post control there are no shooting stats that are affected by weight the only playmaking stat that's affected by weight is speed with ball and the only defensive stats that are affected by weight is interior defense and perimeter defense and both offensive rebound and defensive rebound is affected by strength and then three out of the four physical attributes are affected by weight we're talking about speed agility and strength and then i started messing with the wingspan as you can see and once again you can see the stats changing as i mess with it but i'm going to list off the stats that are affected by wingspan so for finishing it's just driving dunk and standing dunk for shooting it's going to be mid-range and three-pointer for defense it's steal and block and offense rebound and defense rebound is also affected by wingspan not only that but the only physical that's affected by wingspan is strength so the only stats in general that are affected by weight and wingspan is o board d board and strength and then of course there are tons of stats that are not affected by weight or wingspan at all but keep in mind when you do change your height there are tons of stats that drastically change based off your height like for example like you're not getting a 99 dunk on a five foot nine like it's just not gonna happen the next thing i wanted to show you guys is how expensive 99 stats really are especially legend badges so you see i made a 6-2 upgraded to 99-3 
and i get almost every legend shooting badge in the game except for shifty shooter i would have to upgrade something else for that as well and i'm already a 64 overall just off a 99 three-pointer next thing i did was make a 67 small forward and go 99 dunk now without including the vertical to get that legend post riser i'm already a 72 overall now keep in mind the taller you are the less attributes you have to work with and we'll talk about that more later in the video but anyways legend post riser i'm a 74 overall already so so far driving dunk looking like it's pretty expensive uh we went back to, to the smaller point guards because six foot is the tallest build you can make with a 99 ball handle so that's something to know anyways we made the six foot point guard and i went ahead and maxed out our ball handle all the way to a 99 and also keep in mind that there are some 99 stats that give you more legend badges than other 99 stats and y'all saw that that 99 gave me an 83 overall and obviously that's because ball handle was affecting so many other attributes it upgraded my layup it upgraded my pass sack my speed with ball it upgraded my speed my agility even my perimeter defense like dude an 83 overall just off going 99 ball handle like that was pretty insane this next thing i did was make a 6-7 lockdown i went 99 steel ended up maxing out the wingspan as well and 99 steel you only get legend glove and legend interceptor but i'm sure those badges are going to be absolutely insane and that makes you a 65 overall so so far 99 steel looking like one of the cheapest 99 stats but for good reason doesn't give as many legend badges and it doesn't affect as many stats when you upgrade steel i also ended up making a seven foot center build and i maxed out my defense rebound to a 99 for that legend rebound chaser and i'm already a 68 overall i also ended up resetting the stats upgrading to 99 offensive rebound on the same exact build and it affected it the exact same way 68 overall it's the same a off three rebound and defense rebound are the exact same expense in the builder then i went ahead and upgraded my interior defense to a 99 and that actually ended up giving me legend off ball pass and it also made me a 72 overall now you can also get legend off ball pest through perimeter defense so 99 interior not looking like it's really worth it even in the builder regardless if it's good in game and then i went back to the six foot ones and decided to max my mid-range out for that 99 mid-range just to see how it affected compared to three-pointer and hey the mid-range put me to a 63 overall which was only one overall less than the three-pointer at 99 overall the next thing i did was go to a seven foot one center and max out the block to a 99 to get that hall of fame paint patroller and that ended up putting me to a 76 overall so 99 block looking super expensive in the builder but i also had to upgrade my interior defense for that legend paint patroller and yeah that ended up putting me to a 78 overall but so far nothing's messing with that 99 ball handle i went back to small forward six foot five and upgraded my perimeter defense to a 99 and that alone put me to a 76 overall but i still didn't have legend on ball menace which is kind of like the new clamps so i had to upgrade my agility for that and that put me at a 77 overall to get legend challenger legend on ball menace and legend off ball pest and i still didn't even have legend pick dodger which i think you need a 92 agility for i haven't messed around and just upgraded free throw to 99 and that put me to a 41 overall and then this is when things get interesting i upgraded my layup to a 99 and i noticed that i did get legend layup mix match Master, but i didn't get legend float game so i was like dude how do you get legend float game so i went out down scroll over and guys legend float game is by far the most expensive legend badge in the game it's not even close you need a 99 layup or well 98 layup and a 98 close shot you need 298 stats for legend float game so i'm not gonna lie unless you just completely get out your build i don't see anybody having legend flow game or unless they use a badge elevator on it once they get hall of fame because even a post score that's upgrading close shot is not going to have a 98 layup and then most guards or like slashers that have a 98 layup are not going to most likely have a 98 close shot so yeah that was i don't know if that's a mistake or what but that badge is by far the most expensive badge in 2k25 then i tested pass accuracy maxed out that pass act to a 99 and that put me to a 76 overall but hey legend bailout legend versatile visionary legend break starter legend dimer 
Those badges kind of look tough when you when you saw them at the legend level. Then I for my post scores out there, I went ahead and maxed my close shot to a 99. That gave me legend paint prodigy. Now I was only at a 62 overall on this seven foot three build. Ended up upgrading my post control just a little bit just to see what my overall would change because you know I'm trying to you know see what it looks like at that or that legend hook specialist. And once I got the legend hook specialist. Dude, I was only a 77 overall with a 99 close shot and a 97 post control. I feel like that's not even that bad if you're making a post score. Like if you're making a post score, it, it, it's no doubt in my mind I would go for these legend badges. So now here's when things get different and just interesting. So shout out to Joe for sharing this clip with him. I also shared with him some of my builder clips and just pay attention. Well, first of all, you know how when you upgrade stats, other stats are affected by it and also upgrade. So right here, Joe made a 6'6", six, six, small 4, 7'2", wingspan. They put his post control to a 90, and a bunch of other stats automatically upgrade, like we know usually happens when you upgrade a stat. But pay attention to the ball handle. The ball handle automatically goes to an 80 when you put that post control to a 90. Then he just went 6'7", max wingspan, same position, just one inch taller, and he put that post control to a 90, but the ball handle's only at a 70, and he just saved five overalls just by going up one inch and putting the post control to a 90. So if you were making like a post score or some kind of lockdown that just doesn't need ball handle, you are saving a lot of attributes by just going an inch taller just because post control or the other stats that come with post control is affected differently depending on your height. And this also happens with other stats as well. So Joe made a six foot 10 power forward, put his standing dunk to an 85 and pay attention to the difference between standing dunk and driving dunk. Right there, it was a 15 point difference, right? So then he went ahead and made a six nine power forward and his 85 standing dunk put it to a 70 driving dunk. So once again, a 15 point difference. But then he went with a 6'7", and an 80 standing dunk has him as a 70 driving dunk, meaning that the standing dunk driving dunk difference at 6'7", is a 10 point difference, but at 6'8", and 6'10", it's a 15 point difference, meaning that standing dunk is actually going to be more expensive on a 6'7", because it upgrades your driving dunk a lot more than it does when you upgrade your standing dunk on a 6'8 or a 6'10. So this is something that you're gonna have to be super cautious of in the builder because height is actually a huge factor. Not only does it affect your max potential attributes, but it also affects what kind of badges you can unlock. It also affects how many attributes you're gonna have available to you in the actual builder. And now it's going to affect you upgrading certain stats and how the other stats are affected by that stat being upgraded. So height might be the biggest factor in the builder. So another thing that was found in the builder that I personally think has to be a mistake is this strength thing on small builds. Now, I don't think a lot of people are going to be upgrading strength on small builds, but this could tell us something about the height, specifically 6'3". So as you can see, Joe right here puts the height to 6'2", maxes out the weight, puts the wing span to a 6'2", and as you can see, his max potential strength is a 95. Then he puts the height to 6'3", maxes out the weight, puts the wingspan to 6'3", and his strength is a 99. But then he goes, so, so okay, you know, the taller the height, the more strength, okay. But then he goes to 6'4", max weight, and minimum wingspan and his strength is a 98 so his strength went down so wait so his strength goes up from going 6'2 to 6'3 but then it goes down when he goes from 6'3 to 6'4 that doesn't make much sense then we go 6'5 max weight minimum wingspan and the strength goes to a 94 max so what is going on here then 6'6 max weight minimum wingspan and the max strength is also a 94. But once again, we go back to 6'3", max weight, minimal wingspan, and the strength is a 99, which makes no sense. So you can get a 99 strength on a 6'3", but you can't on a 6'2", a 6'4", a 6'5", and a 6'6", with the same max weight, minimum wingspan stuff. Like, it just doesn't make sense, right? And you're gonna see in my other videos that the 6'3 height is a very good height, but this could 
also just literally prove how broken the six threes are like because this night i know like most people aren't gonna put or maybe anyone is gonna put a 99 strength on their six three build obviously but it just goes to show you like six three is just an insane height to be at like they're just giving you extra shit to give you extra stuff and you're gonna see what these max six three builds look like soon and i mean they're just they're they're insane they're literally insane but we'll get into the what the max some of these max builds look like at the end of the video because like i said earlier the shorter you go the more attributes you get and you're gonna see how massive a difference of it is when you look at a 99 6 7 and a 99 6 3 or you know five foot nine you know what let's just show you guys right now what i'm talking about when i tell you that the smaller you go in height the more attributes you get so what let's go ahead upgrade a six foot seven okay now you're gonna see this more in my complete build videos we're gonna have t we already have tons of build videos on the channel already for 2k25 so make sure to go check them out but anyways and i'm going to be posting more as the days go on but let's see so we up first thing we do we get we get the three pointer to an 89 by the way i wouldn't recommend making this six seven build because this is without knowing the contact dunk animations that i later learned that same day and made builds based off that so yeah i'm, I'm just upgrading random stuff to show y'all what a six seven could look potentially look like at a 99 overall so we upgrade the ball handle upgrade the speed with ball upgrade the three-pointer upgrade the driving dunk and so far this builds you know not, not looking too bad now a lot of people when they saw these 99 overalls um that 2k put on twitter they were like smaller builds and they were assuming that they would be able to get those same attributes on taller builds and i'm telling you right now six six attributes six seven attributes six eight attributes are not going to look as good as they did in 2k24 okay they're not the, the builds that are going to look better than the builds in 2K24 on the attribute screen are going to be the builds that are 5'9, 5'10, 5'11, 6'1, 6'2, 6'3, 6'4. Okay? The shorter builds. Those are the builds that got a buff. These other taller builds, they got a nerf. Okay? So this is what a 99 overall 6'7 looks like. We have a 93 dunk. We have an 89 3. We have an 86 ball handle. 71 pass axe, 75 speed ball, 79. Uh, mid-range 85 perimeter 79 steel 74 blocks 62 interior 85 speed 77 agility 80 vertical now now this build isn't bad or anything this is still a good build but i'm gonna put a screenshot on the screen of a 2k24 build that's the same height same position same weight same wingspan and i upgraded my dunk to a 93 upgraded my three-pointer to an 89 the pass act the ball and speed ball interior defense perimeter steel speed excel strength and vertical to the exact stats they were on the 2k25 build i just made as you can see a lot of the stats weren't being automatically upgraded like they were in 2k25 the 2k25 build automatically went to a 73 close shot automatically went to a 43 standing dunk automatically went to a 46 post control automatically went to a 49 defensive rebound there are certain things that were just automatically being upgraded that wouldn't have been automatically upgraded on 2k24 and you can see the 2k24 build all the main stats i have are the same but i'm only a 97 overall meaning that these taller builds when you upgrade them there's going to be other stats that are affected more by them meaning that you're going to have less room before you reach that 99 max threshold meaning that the taller builds are better in 2k24 attribute wise than they're going to be in 2k25 now before i show you what some of these short builds are looking like and the comparison of them to 2k24 well i will say after playing the gameplay i do think despite shorter builds having better attributes and more attributes to work with in the builder i do think the taller builds are going to have an advantage in game despite having lower stats now obviously smaller builds have the advantage with speed and stuff but the way taller players were moving like nba players like magic johnson lebron kd were moving when i was playing 2k25 it felt like they just kind of had that advantage the best comparison i can give this is if anybody used like a six foot eight pure yellow facilitating finisher in 2k20 that build stats didn't necessarily look crazy but in game because of the wingspan the height and literally just the frame of the build it moved and played so much better than the attributes showed and i think that's what these tall builds are going to be looking like in 2k25 despite what the attributes say on the screen and these attributes are still good it's not like these are bad attributes or anything this is a great build right here once again wouldn't recommend making this build because this isn't based off any animations or anything i just upgraded some stuff and made a build but now let's look at the smaller builds. so you see i make a five foot nine the shortest height you can make so i can really show you guys that the smaller you go the more attributes you get and look at this 
we upgrade ball handle to a 99. Then we upgrade steel to a 99. Then we upgrade three pointer to a 99. And right now, I am only a 97 overall, and I have an 84 layup, a 74 close shot, an 89 mid range, a 99 three a 99 ball handle, a 74 pass second, 89 speed ball, a 74 perimeter, a 99 steal, an 84 speed. I have tons of legend badges. I'm talking legend dead eye, legend limitless range, legend mini marksman, legend set shot specialist, legend ankle assassin, legend handles for days, legend unpluckable, legend interceptor, legend glove. That's nine legend badges and I've only upgraded three stats. I really haven't even messed around with the build yet because if I really mess around with this build and spend some more of these attributes, guess what? I can get an 88 agility. I can get a 94 speed with ball, get the hall of fame lightning launch, then put a badge elevator on it and get legend lightning launch and then have a total of 10 legend badges on this build, which is legend badges through playmaking, shooting and defense. Now I know what you're probably thinking. You're like, oh, double H it's five nine. It's not gonna work. Okay, obviously the five nine is not gonna be for the ones core or the twos core but on the threes and the fives this build is going to be absolutely insane now once again you don't have to go as short as five nine this is just to show you guys how crazy these builds can get when you go shorter you can go watch the other build videos i have on 2k25 on the channel i show the best taller iso builds that i made at community day like six 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 seven six eight without knowing the animation thresholds i showed what a really good five nine looks like and i'm going to show what i think is one of the better builds in the game at 6-3 and yes you can defend players at 6-3 6-3 is going to be one of the best heights in the game because at 6-3 i feel like you can play the ones core are you going to guard a post score probably not but it's a post score going to guard you no are you going to be able to guard those six 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 seven builds in the right hands hell yes on 6-3 you're going to be able to do that 6-3 is going to be good for twos it's going to be good for threes it's going to be good for fives 6-3 is another good height where if you're not comfortable being as short as 5-9, you're still going to get all these extra attributes. You're still going to get all these other crazy stats. And you're going to get that advantage on that short builds get when it comes to more attributes in the builder. But you're also not going to be too short to not be able to play like defense against taller builds. But I mean, the 5-9 still does have a 99 steal. Not to mention, I'm not going to show the 6-3-99 stats. Go watch the 6-3 video. I already posted the build video on it. But that build gets contact dunks. It can get, it gets a high three-pointer, high ball handle, good pass sack, high defensive stats. The build's all around insane. Probably the best all around build in 2K25. But yeah, the point I'm trying to make here is the shorter you go, the more attributes you get in the builder. But that doesn't mean you can't go taller because I think these taller builds are going to have advantage physically and just frame-wise, height-wise. The advantage they have with those things physically are going to be very noticeable in-game, in my opinion. Now, we're not even done yet because I didn't even show y'all a 99.59. We're comparing a 99.59 on 2K25 to 2K24. By the way, look at this 2K25.59 at a 99 overall. Dude, an 85 layup, 99 three, 85 pass sack with a 91 speed with ball, 89 speed, 82 agility. You could probably lower the speed and increase the agility too if you wanted to do that. I mean, this build already has 10 legend badges and it has Hall of Fame lightning launch, which means if you put the badge elevator on lightning launch, this build will get 11, 11 legend badges. Do you know how crazy that is? That is insane. But anyways, going back to comparing it to 2K24, the 2K24 5.9 with the same weight, height, and wingspan can't even get a 99.3, even if that was the first thing you upgraded for with this wingspan for whatever reason. And then once you get to 98.3 and 99 steel, you only have enough to go to 95 ball handle. And look, you got no pass tag. Yeah, but low speed ball. You got basically no acceleration, which is agility in 2K25. You have low speed. You have no way less layup. I, lower mid-range. I mean, clearly... These shorter builds got a buff, which is exactly the point. I mean, just look at that 2K25 5.9. I mean, God damn, that build looking crazy. Anyways, let's move on to the next thing. Now, before we get to what every badge level requirement is for bronze through legend, let's go ahead and remind you guys, make sure to take screenshots of these. These are all the 2K25 badges. 
zoom in, screenshot. If you're not familiar with these badges, the name of these badges, the logo of these badges, or what these badges do, then make sure to look it over. So once again, if you need to pause a screenshot, do that. Here is another graphic of the removed badges for 2K25. So these were badges that were in 2K24 that you will not be seeing in 2K25. So once again, pause screenshot if needed. And then here is another graphic which kind of really shows a little bit of everything. It shows the new badges and what those badges could be reworked like. So for example, Ankle Assassin is going to be kind of like Ankle Breaker or Versatile Visionary is going to be like Needle Threader and Special Delivery in one. So this is definitely a good graphic for you all to look at. So make sure to screenshot pause take a look at it get familiar with the 2k25 badges now, obviously speaking of badges let's go over every single badge level requirement i'm just going to be speeding through them so if you want to pause and see what badge you're interested in to get at bronze silver gold hall of fame legend i'm showing all the requirements on the screen right now i would definitely pause and look through these ones that are like interesting that i wrote down just to say out loud 98 ball handles hall of or legend ankle assassin 93 three-pointer is gold limitless range this year i feel like that's kind of cheap for gold limitless range so that's really good that's something to note down uh 91 prim and an 80 agility can give you gold on ball menace which is kind of like clamps this year 96 dunk 85 vert is that hall of fame posterizer strong handle is the cheapest legend badge you can get it with a 93 strength and an 80 ball handle uh also gold dimer is kind of cheap 82 pass sack i feel like that's pretty cheap for gold dimer uh probably a badge definitely to look into if you have some extra points to put on pass sack slippery off ball on legend you need a 99 speed and a 96 agility i thought that was interesting obviously that's going to be super rare badge that's just going to be super expensive also that silver chase down badge that new silver chase down badge uh 78 block that one's pretty um easy to get on most builds so i would definitely look into getting that but yeah these are all the requirements for all the badges this is very useful information so make sure to drop a like for me including this in the video for y'all now that we're done with badges it's time to look at takeovers i'm going to be showing every takeover in the entire game so if you want to pause look for your favorite takeovers at the time to do it i'm showing all 72 takeovers what stats they affect and what takeover abilities they come with above the rim is going to give you a boost towards driving dunk and look at the oh my god look at the list of all these takeovers we're going to go over if you want to skip around go ahead and do so but if you want to make sure you find your takeover before 2k25 comes out then go ahead stick around screenshot look through all of these and how they will affect your my player and yeah try to make sure you unlock it when you make your build if you do want it attacking is driving layup and driving dunk yes some of these takeovers will affect one stat but some of them will affect two stats some of them will affect three stats and all of them will come with a certain takeover ability so this one comes with poster machine and driving dunk barbecue chicken was one of the ones 2k25 or 2k was promoting block party is interior defense and block uh board beast offensive rebound and defensive rebound and if you don't know anything about takeovers go watch um one of my old 2k25 news videos the level one through five thing will make more sense but basically level five is just like the max your takeover meter completely maxed out level one's like it not maxed out yet but it's like barely anything in your takeover so yeah just basically look at your 2k24 takeover level one is at the very beginning of the takeover meter and level five is at the end if you guys you know didn't know about that but anyway chef we got mid-range and three-pointer i know a lot of you guys are gonna be looking at that with deep bomber takeover ability to shoot from even deeper that might be a takeover that a lot of you use right there we have clinic we have defensive presence so steel block and then it starts adding agility once you get to level two that's interesting we have defense or we got diesel takeover we got dr duncanstein takeover so standing dunks and driving dunk boost that's crazy dribble wizard so ball handle and speed with ball uh we got uh driver which also comes with poster machines so a lot of these takeovers share this same takeover ability because once again there's 72 takeovers and i think there's like 12 or maybe 14 takeover abilities so a lot of them will have the same takeover ability rim guardians block interior interior force is standing dunk so you want to make a post score you can go with that uh you got uh fearless focus with silky shooter takeover ability 
Uh, you got feathery touch, so close shot, driving lamp, finisher, driving lamp, driving dunk, and vertical boost with poster machine. That one's definitely going to be a good takeover for my slashers out there. You got finesser, which is giving a couple different ones right there. Flash, so ball handle, speed with ball, and speed. Yo, yo, flash might be a really good takeover for some of y'all. That's a good one right, right there. Fluid shooter with marksman takeover permanently. Oh, okay. So that okay. I kind of like that one. So any spot up shooters out there, maybe some sharp shooters that like the shoot, catch and shoots. That's a good one for y'all. Uh, they got bro. There are so many takeovers. Gifted hands, so three pointer and steal. Ooh, that's a good one. Gifted hands is gonna be good for two way players. I might have to look for gifted hands. I like that one. Steal and three pointer. That's not a bad one right there. You got glass gunner you got clue so you got glass warrior a lot of glass cleaning ones to block officer around defense rebound that one's a really good one i like that if you want to be a rim protector and clean up all the boards great wall okay so a strength one we got grit offense around defense rebound and strength intimidator so interior defense block and strength we got horse so you just want to go for rebounds with a vertical. Ooh, that's a good one. Horse is going to be a really good one for centers out there because vertical definitely helps a lot when it comes to getting rebounds. Probably could save some attributes in the builder too if you're going to take over a lot. Make it rain. Mid-range three-pointer and speed. And you get a boost to your uh, perimeter shots with the takeover. Ooh, that's a good one. Make it rain might be one of the best takeovers we've seen so far. We got a uh, midi, ma midi maestro takeover so that's gonna boost your mid-range and notice how when it's only affecting one stat it boosts it way more like that mirror one put a plus 15 to perimeter defense at level five but this one the ones that are sharing three are giving plus seven to different stats but technically if you're getting plus seven to three different stats that's like a plus 21 total so you're getting more attributes boosted but it's like spread out rather than just in one category. So y'all are gonna have to decide, do you want one category boosted, two, maybe three? It's a lot of toss ups here, but as long as you know, you're probably gonna unlock way more than one takeover and takeover ability on your build. So you can switch them around once you make your build. You don't have to make a definite decision, but if there is a takeover or takeover ability that you specifically want that you see in this video, you have to make sure that your build unlocks it before making the build and we went over earlier in the video how to make sure that you are have certain takeovers unlocked if you didn't see that make sure to rewind that one has driving dunk speed and agility that's going smooth operator ball handle driving layup okay spot up shooter is another takeover that I have here that might be another good takeover for any sharp shooters out there spot up shooters maybe hashes on pro am sniper a plus 10 to three pointer at level five uh three-pointer and interior defense that's a weird one maybe for like a popper like a center build that can shoot okay they got swiper so steal and driving dunk Ooh, okay see i feel like the three ones are better than the twos like that one gave a plus eight to two stats but you can get a plus seven to three stats i feel like you either go one stat or three stats boosted like it seems like the two stats aren't that good like look at this one the claw plus 15 steal like that's insane and these ones right here, like you get a plus seven to three different stats. I feel like the, the 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 best takeovers are definitely the ones where you go plus seven on three different stats or you go like plus 15 to one or maybe plus 10 to like a three pointer or something. But like right here, perimeter defense, three pointer and agility. That's a really good one. Three and D might be one of the best takeovers I've seen. Agility, three pointer and perimeter. That's going to be insane for lockdowns. That's definitely a good one. They got trifecta. Uh, and hey, those are all the takeovers right there. Rewind, pause, try. I would highly recommend finding what takeovers you like the most, writing them down before you load up 2K25 for the first time so you don't have to waste too much time doing that. But hey, there's all the takeover requirements. There's all the badge requirements, all that good information. I hope y'all had your notepads out for, for them stuff right there. Now, one thing that sucked about Community Day is they didn't tell us any ball handle requirements. They didn't tell us, oh, this is the, the ball handle requirement for Jamal Murray go-to shot, or this is the requirement for Tracy McGrady jump shot base, or this is the requirement for Trey Young escape. They didn't tell us any of that, but the only things they told us were the requirements for contact dunks and standing dunk animations. So I'm gonna provide you guys that information here because I don't know any of the other requirements as of right now but i feel like contact dunks are probably going to be the, one of the most asked things 
So as you can see, here's the list of the contact dunk requirements. So if you are, you know, going for contact dunks, you know, 89 driving dunk, 78 vert is probably, you know, one threshold that I like right here. The next threshold is a huge jump though. The 96 driving dunk, 82 vert. Quick little tip though, you may as well go to 85 vert, 96 dunk, because that's where Hall of Fame post risers at. So if you're going to go 96 dunk for those packages, make sure to get Hall of Fame posterizer with an 85 vertical. Do not make that mistake. And then if you want all the dunk packages, 99 driving dunk, 90 vertical. Now, do keep cap breakers in, in mind with this because if you go with the 96 dunk and you use like three cap breakers on your dunk, you're going to get that elite contact dunks off one or, you know, off that. So I want to, you know, put a 99 dunk in the builder just because with the cap breakers, you're probably going to be able to get that dunk package anyways. But yeah, if you're going for contact dunks, I'll go 89, 78 or 96, 85. And then if you're six, four, four or below, you can get con small contact dunks through 86 driving dunk or 93 driving dunk. But once again, if you want to get that 86, you may as well go to 89, 78 to get the pro contact dunks off one. And if you're going to go 93, 80, you're probably not going to be able to get the 96 dunk on some shorter builds. But yeah, 9380 is a good threshold too if you're 6'4 or below. And then there's the pro and elite big man contact dunks at an 80 and 90 standing dunk with a 60 and 70 vertical. And not only that, we have just regular standing dunk packages. So if you guys remember in 2K24, a lot of people would always put at least a 40 or 45 standing dunk on their build. Once again, you're gonna wanna do that in 2K25 because the, only, the, the cheapest standing dunk animation is a 40. So if you guys want standing dunks, you need a 40 standing dunk, otherwise you're not gonna get them. Uh, there's some other good standing dunk animations here if you want to go even higher. So lockdowns that want a back door or maybe centers that want, you know, some standing dunk animations. Go ahead, screenshot this. Um, a big tip for any guards out there that do just want to be able to standing dunk. There's no point in going 45. That one hand standing dunk gets blocked a lot more. You don't even want that animation equipped. The two hand is actually better than the one hand. So don't even go 45. Just go 40. Just a quick tip for anybody that wants a build just to at least get some kind of standing dunk animation when going up for a standing dunk so yeah just go 40 don't even go for 45 don't go past 40 unless you're going for these other animations at 65 through 85. so we're going to end off the video by showing a bunch of different build names that i got while creating builds in 2k25 so make sure to drop a like if this video helped you out at all. Make sure to subscribe and check out the builds I posted on my channel because I'm going to be spamming a bunch of different builds I made at Community Day that you can go ahead and check out and maybe base those builds off of maybe a build that you want to make in 2K25. Not obviously too exact, but maybe something similar, right? So you see, I got a 2A inside out score. That was like probably the worst name I got. As we go on, they'll get better. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was kind of, I was just like, oh, that kind of sucks because that's like a 2K24 type of build name. But you're gonna see especially the center builds i feel like they actually had some pretty cool names especially some of the lockdown builds i saw some other build names that i got or that other people got that i didn't get to that were cool like i saw like a two-way slammer or something this one was a shot creating three level threat uh kind of similar build names that we've seen before so that was like nothing crazy but yeah there are some really cool build names that you can get I'm just showing the ones that I stumbled upon at Community Day. Uh, so don't think, if you, if you don't like any of the build names here, don't think that there's not any good build names because there's some definitely some unique ones out there. Uh, so far, the ones that I've shown so far are kind of like generic 3 and D-Wing, but you're going to see there's a couple ones that are pretty cool, uh, starting with one in a second here, but this one's two-way inside out ISO creator. I don't think I've ever seen ISO in a build name it's kind of funny because that was one of the, in my opinion the best build i made at community day and they put iso in the build name so that was kind of cool uh then i made kind of like a shorter shooting guard build uh that could play defense and it was called a three and d two guard so basically just the three and do go or three and d guard but just at the shooting guard position uh this one was called a switchable lockdown defender so another unique name in 2K25. I've never seen switch or switchable in a build name before. This one was simple, just a stretch four. We've seen that before. Um, I don't know if that one specifically was in 24, but we've seen that in previous 2Ks. This one, I got a Tim Duncan shade. Draymond Green, Evan Mobley. That's pretty good shades right there. And this was called a versatile defender, but probably the most unique one that I stumbled upon 
um, at community day was board hunting stretch four that's a cool center build name but anyways if this video helped you out at all make sure to drop a like subscribe and once again check out the other 2k25 videos i posted from community day a bunch of early 2k25 footage on the channel to be boy henry aka double h and i'm out of here y'all peace